They're speaking to a lady that's just opened the door and they're just asking her if she might need prayer for anything. And Yolanda's talking to him about uh, there's two kinds of people. There's those in this neighborhood that are saved and, and they have found out that he needs prayer for something and now they have joined hands with him and they're praying with him. And he has... Um, indicated that he needs prayer for some area of his life, possibly salvation or healing, but they are praying with him now. Now Ashley's talking to him and she's going to ask him, there's two kinds of people that are out in this neighborhood. There's those that are saved and those that are about to be. like now they're praying the prayer of salvation because they've already prayed with him for his needs and it looks like that Roberts asked him if um, he was saved or about to be and now they're praying with him again what we're doing now is we're going up to the door 
what we're doing is we're going up to the door. Uh, we knock on the door and uh, ring the doorbell and to see if anyone's home. And um, when people answer, we ask uh, if they are if they want prayer for anything, for healing, for family, for. And when we go out, we have um, like today we have a new person that we we'll, we are training, and it's on the job training. Uh, we do have a training session every fourth Saturday, but um, training is constant as we go out, and uh, we just tell them basically how to minister and um, have them to be led by the Spirit and be led by um, what the Lord, Lord's will is and not necessarily by what we think needs to happen. Okay. And when, when we knock on the doors, when those that are not home will either leave a business card or a flyer or just depending upon um, what is relevant for that home. When we do speak to, to people um, and they get uh, they do say the prayer of salvation, then we'll give them the This New Life book and a flyer for the Bible fellowship groups that are in there. Right now what they're doing is they're just asking them if they want prayer for anything. And we specific needs are to have a specific prayer uh, to bind up whatever it is that, that's necessary and open up the, the gates of heaven to, to bless them and bless their home and their family. And right now what they're doing, they're um, praying with them just holding hands and again this is just as the spirit leads you sometimes you may just need to lay hands on the person other time uh, you just need to hold hands with everyone because there is power and agreement and power with um, praying in groups And we've seen so many people saved, set free, delivered from from anything from alcoholism to to sickness. We've seen healing. Sometimes people do not necessarily open the door for us, but um, we need to at least try to minister to them and um, get them to, to open, their, open their door. And those people that are not willing, we pray for the angels to be released and commissioned for their hearts to be opened when we go out. So those that do not open the door, we don't get offended by that, but just keep pressing in and moving on. Mm -hmm. So now what has aspired from this is there's a, a communication level, there's a trust there, and um, there, he's seeing, he's witnessing the love of Jesus from these people and able to um, break down those barriers and those walls. And he's more apt to, um, to live his life for the Lord because he's seeing the love firsthand. And what we're doing now is just praying in agreement for whatever their need are, whatever their specific need is.
And in this neighborhood, especially that we've been going to, there's a lot of poverty mentality and lack mentality. And so we're breaking off those barriers and breaking down those walls to get them to realize that there is more, there's more that Jesus can provide them, not only monetarily, but also, you know, their soul to prosper. What we do is we go up to the door and, um, again, as the Spirit leads us, we ask them the, if, uh, the two kinds of people. There are two kinds of people that we come across in this neighborhood, those that are saved and those that are about to be saved. And then pray the prayer of salvation for those that say that they're about to be. Awesome about this, they were able to pray with the family. And now Yolanda's getting um, information on the altar ministry card. And what we do is we get their um, name and address and telephone number, and uh, we follow up with them, make sure that you know, see if they have any questions, if they have, um, if, the, if they are a new convert, and they prayed the prayer of salvation. Then we'll call them, ask them if they have questions, if they need prayer for any other things and just keep in, top, in contact with them. A young man uh, named Jeremy is in from college. He goes to Wichita State, and he said he came home this weekend and was having a lot of family problems, and he was really discouraged. And when we, when we knocked on the door, he uh, we prayed with him. He needed requested some prayer. And Robert and Caroline and I prayed with him, and um, then he prayed for us because he felt like he said we really encouraged him because we came to the door right when he needed some encouragement. Then he prayed for us as we go out into his neighborhood to minister to his neighbors, and he prayed that God would bless us and that God would give us encouragement as well. It was just really awesome to hear one of the people at the door pray for us. Well, Miss Irma Houston. She just received prayer for her mother. Her mother has been in dialysis. We also pray for the financial situation with the insurance and stuff for less copay because God wants his people to be protected financially as well while we're doing the Lord's will. She's honoring her mother. Her mother goes to dialysis and she said her mother bleeds and bleeds for hours and has to go to the emergency room. Well, we know that comes with um, co-payments, you know, emergency room visit fees and stuff like that that insurance didn't cover. We prayed that the insurance even find some clauses and loopholes that they didn't pay attention to before that they pay attention to now and that everything be taken care of for her because she is honoring her mother and we spoke to her son and reminded him that he has to honor his mother the same way that his mother is honoring his grandmother and she received prayer and we gave her instructions on the This New Life book and she already goes to a church and we know that God is going to be working miraculous inside her life. She's going right. to see the glory of the Lord.
Jose encouraged the woman to come and get prayer for her family and told her we can pray for you right out here. We don't have to go into your house. And it just so happens that the woman actually came out to get prayer for all those things that we mentioned before. And she mentioned that she's seen, I told her that the Lord is already blessing her neighborhood. God already promised to sprinkle his spirit on this neighborhood and this community. And she said that she has seen what God has been doing. And that um, she saw she saw a man that we brought to Christ. The Lord used us to bring this man that was walking down the street to Christ two Saturdays ago. She asked seen it so we know that it's not about preaching it's not about facing people and confronting them with the word of God but it's the life that you live that people are watching so she watched us and then she knew who we was we finally got to meet her she got to meet us and then she actually was even touched by the Lord through us so it's all about doing his work and letting him get the glory in his manifestation all right, all right. That's good, man. That's good. We do it. I thought that's what he said. Yeah, I'm going. I don't have nothing to do it today. Okay. Oh. Oh. Out with the group, and I have to admit that I was less than enthusiastic to start because of things from my past that I needed to break off. But I've seen this group go out, I've seen them pray for people, I've seen them bless the people with the Spirit of the Lord, and that is basically what it's all about. And I'm real excited, it's a lot of fun. This is my first time with this group at Victory Christian Center. Um, my calling is to minister to the depressed and people who have fear. Uh, I came out of a lot of fear and depression, and so the Bible says, because you've received free, really give what you've received. I also know how to um, teach people how to get healed, how to keep their health once they get it, not lose it. I haven't been sick for the last seven years, and I know how to resist sickness, depression, and fear, and so. So that's what I'm here is to minister to people who have um, needs in these three areas. A is speaking to somebody, introducing somebody, right and just to pray for somebody right now. Go for you, you, sir. We just walked down. We just left um, this house actually about 15, 20 minutes ago and we left um, some literature and they said that everything was all right and the young man put the literature in his pocket and stuff and um, now this new young man just came outside of the house. He wasn't here earlier because that wasn't the vehicle that was here. Well now him and his daughter just came out and Jose just walked up to him and asked him, you know, if he, you know, wanted prayer for anything and this is how we do it. If, you know, we just be spirit led and sure enough, the man is getting prayer, and his young daughter is right on the other side of him. She has to be about two or three years old. So, okay. I just wanted to say that I've been coming to evangelism for a while, and in the last month or so, it's amazing to see God work and not us, more of His Spirit and more of Him going before us, and it's just teaching me so much, and I'm just expecting such a great harvest from this, and just seeing just lots and lots of people saying it's awesome to, to see God work and not us. It doesn't matter how old you are. And being that God is who He is, He made this the appropriate time. Not later, not before, it's but already, right now. It's already too late for me. No, it's not too late for you. You just keep thinking that. 
but them on prostitutes or on things that are not going to help or pursue the kingdom of God. He's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. A lot of people are, exactly, a lot of people are thinking that God is not a trick. You can't help God. God knows your heart. You cannot trick him or you can't pimp him. And he's not a trick. God knows your heart. A lot of people want God to bless them, but for what? What are you going to do with it? So he wants to restore you spiritually so that your heart will be turned right. So when he does bless you, you're listening to his wisdom and you're doing what he wants you to do so that you can succeed and then bless somebody else. That's yeah, what God's yeah. blessing is for. That's, that's why yeah, he that's... restored me. That's why I'm not on drugs anymore. That's, that's why I'm not homeless anymore. So that I can talk to people on my phone from my own apartment and the peace that God has given me to help them so they can continue walking in the peace. To pray with them over the phone. That's why I have clothes. And that's why I have glasses and insurance and a new job. So that I can come out on the street presentable and then you say, well, it's too late for me. Well, you ready? Okay. You ready? Okay. You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Thank you, sir. 